Okay, and welcome back and this is the chip master and welcome to another video series or another class where I'm going to explain the CPU power delivery right the CPU power delivery is a very complex circuit or the CPU power supply circuit is a very complex circuit to understand right many repair guys find it difficult on understanding the the whole working conditions of the CPU power supply regulator and the whole entire principle of the CPU power supply delivery so in this class i'm going to explain this is a demo video i will not explain the entire process right i'm going to explain with the help of a, of this diagram designer here where i'm going to sketch out a diagram with a step-by-step -step sequence how to check the cpu power supply the cpu power supply is very complex because it carries a high amount of current as you can see icc over current right this is a 33 ampere of current and over current protection is 40 exceeding over 40 ampere this is for the gfx core this is for the vcc core right so we're going to look for the vcc core vcc core we have 94 ampere as you can see this is a very large amount of current that's been generated from the cpu power supply delivery and the overcurrent protection is a maximum of 112 ampere so that's the total amount of current so you should pay attention when analyzing and troubleshooting a circuit to the current right so overcurrent protection is 112 ampere so the cpu core power supply carries a lot of current as you can see right and that is why i'm going to have a class dedicated to the cpu power supply only the cpu power supply all right so first <coughs> as you can see we have uh the cpu power supply era consists of different phases right so we have like this is a pl3 this is a coil right so that would be phase one we have another phase here coil here pl5 the vcc core right another vcc core coming out here that's two phases right and uh we have another coil here of pl5 and that's sorry we have another yes that's so that's pl3 sorry yes and this is pl5 right and uh this is the driver oh so this is a two phase let me confirm if this is a two phase so we only have two phases so that's for three phase one for the vcc core two for the vcc core right and we have one for gfx core right so gfx core oh here's another one pl4 so that's one right we have two and three that's three phases right two plus one phase right so it's a two plus one extra phase so we have a total of three phases so we have pl4 here which is another coil we have another coil here for the gfx core right this one is for the graphics internal graphics this general voltage will be generated after the cpu soft is initialized the ram is initialized all the cpu the chipsets graphics card are initialized before the cpu vote this voltage will come and the bios must be okay also right so if the bios is not okay and the pch cannot the cpu cannot read the bios then it cannot initialize the ram hence you can't have vcc gfx core right so we only have three phases which is this one we have right el4 sorry this is that emi coil which is where the vin 19 volt coming through this coil and, and it becomes plus vin underscore vcc underscore core one we have another coil here's another the first coil pl4 right vcc core right here another coil pl3 vcc core and below another coil here pl5 which is vcc core so we have three phases this is a three phase so if you look at the data sheet all right if you look at the data sheet of the cpu power supply see three plus one so three voltage three phase plus one for the vcc core so it's a three plus one voltage regulator for imvp7 right the imvp stands for intel mobile voltage positioning which is 7 vr12 so basically this is a dynamic adjustment of the cpu power supply that is why it's called intel mobile voltage positioning so no matter what condition the cpu power is the voltage will adjust based on the state of the cpu so let's read what this says so a complaint compliant with imvp7 isl 9581 provides a complete solution of microprocessor and graphics core power supply it provides two voltage regulators as you can see with your three integrated gate drivers first for the vr configured as three to two or one phase right while the second output one is vr right and it is a providing maximum flexibility to the two voltage regulators shear serial control so this is known as the sm bus right svid right so remember this is an svid controlled right before in intel series 4 and below it was pvid where we have vid1 vid0 vid2 vid3 vid4 right up to 6 but now all the information is transferred through the svid so we have a svid clock and we have an svid data right so this is what makes up the sm bus 
right? This is a communication between the CPU and the CPU regulator, this ISL95831, okay? So I'm going to explain the steps on how to check. As I said, this is a demo video, right? So first and foremost, we have here, which is VIN. This is generally 19 volt, right? Right, this is generally 19 volt during the maintenance process, and you can see it's plus VIN underscore VCC underscore one, right? Plus VIN underscore VCC underscore core one, sorry. And this is uh, coming from the adapter, so let's select this, copy this signal, and see where it's coming from. All right, so normally, as I said before, this signal V in is from the adapter, which is generally 19 volt. All right, so let's select the first one as you can see it is coming from this coil right and it is coming from this coil as you can see v in so v in coming through el4 which is that coil which is for electromagnetic interference with these capacitors right as i said before el these coils are used to block high frequency so to protect your devices from electromagnetic interference because the cpu current is so large Many times these upper MOSFET will burn. So this is why they have two MOSFETs for the upper MOSFET because of the large amount of current, right? If they used one for the upper and one for the lower, then if this is damaged due to overcurrent, then we have another MOSFET here can work, right? So if this one is, is the, if there is only one MOSFET and, and it is damaged, then you will have a short on the 19 volt rail because of the board flex and the amount of current that is being generated in the CPU power supply. So that is why they put two MOSFETs, two upper MOSFETs here and two lower MOSFETs here because of the high frequency. Remember, the higher the switch in frequency, the higher the switch in frequency, the higher the current, right? So that is the rule of thumb that you must pay attention and bear in mind. So the higher the switch in frequency, the larger the output current that is being generated at this coil, right? And the CPU total amount of current is for the CPU, as I said before, is 94 ampere. All right, and overcurrent protection is 112 ampere, as you can see. Now, the, the next thing, so V in, as I said, is coming from the adapter, which is 19 volt. The next signal you want to check is VDD. This is generally 5 volt coming from there. See, plus 5V, right? This is normally a PWM voltage, as you can see, right? This is normally from a PWM voltage. We have another voltage here for the VDDP. This is the internal phase power supply so instead of the cpu regulator you have two phase power supply right we have two phase power we have a an internal phase power supply right uh, uh it is known as a buck regulator power supply and that's what's powering that internal vddp so that's this v vddp right is is being powered five volt so that five volt is coming to power the internal logic right buck regulator inside of the cpu power supply right i wonder if you understand what i'm trying to say right so understanding how the cpu regulator works you usually use your data sheet right i will get to that in a moment all right so the next signal that's we have vin right two supplies three supplies as well but these are the two main supplies so this is normally from a, a, a pwm voltage from 5 volt and 3.3 .3 volt regulator Right, so 5 volt and 3.3 .3 volt regulator is somewhere on the, let me find 5 volt and 3.3 .3 volt regulator. Right, let's go back until we find it. All right, here it is. This is 5 volt and 3.3 .3 volt regulator page. Right, and this is our quanta board as you can see. So this is 3 volt PCU, right, and this is 5 volt PCU as you can see. Right, so this is not coming from PWM, it's coming from switch voltage. So this is this is a pulse width modulation voltage, right? PWM, right? This is a linear voltage as you can see. Five volt underscore always, right? Underscore AL, always linear, right? Where this is a linear supply, PVCC. This is the internal logic buck controller power supply inside of this RT8206M, right? So this is this the power supply is for the PW, VDDP is coming from run power SLPS3. This is SLPS3 supply, right? These two supplies are from SLPS3, right? S0 state and power ND, pin number 31 and pin number 22. So this voltage will appear after pressing the trigger or after pressing the switch on the notebook motherboard. Okay, so I have my diagram designer here. Let me extend my canvas a little bit larger, right? So let's put this at about uh, 300, 
all right so i can have more space all right so uh so this is the cpu power supply and this is our cpu all right this is the cpu let me get it a perfect square all right and this one is our isl95 so this is our i isl95831 right and this is the cpu okay so uh let me bold okay all right so that's the cpu all right this, this is the uh, all right so let me also increase the size of this a bit larger line thickness let me put this about five six seven. all right and i'll start all right so this is the cpu and this is a regulator right so um the first step that i said before you should check is the v in the v in supply this is vdd right so v in right and this is normally 19 volt in general this is 19 volt and it's coming to the v in pin all right all right so this is v in Right, and this is the first step all right so I'll, uh, label steps for you this is how I normally teach when I'm designing teaching I'll design a diagram for you at the same time so this is the first step let me get this uh, all right carry the circle a bit more in all right and that's uh let's change the color i want the fill color to be purple see purple and the in all right good so this is the first step so this is v in the second step that we need is the vdd all right this is vdd And then we have VDDP. So you should, this is the first step. All right, and uh, all right. So um, and these are connected together by a five volt always. All right, let me get this line perfect. Okay. All right, so that's VDDP. And this is five volts supply. Plus 5V. Alright, so that's the first step. Alright, so back to the schematic. So we have our power supply is intact, right? As you can see, we have to apply. Now the next thing we want to check is our VR on. So this is VR on, which is the enable pin, which is known as, as you can see, you have SHDN, which is for shutdown, which is an enable pin. All right, generally this is a uh, 3.3 volt. Let's see where it's coming from. All right, so this is shut down, shut down. Alright, see, shut down. So when all these power supplies are okay, so VR on, H power good, hardware power good, and C shut down. All these supplies must be okay. All these supplies, HWPG, each regulator on this board, this is a quanta characteristics. So each power supply regulator releases a hardware power good signal. And this hardware power good signal is coming 
after all the supplies are okay then this vr on will release right vr on will release and will be and it is coming to pin number seven right so when all the supplies are okay right all supplies are okay sys should shut down is, is not pull low if sys shutdown is pull low right then it will cut off three volt and five volt regulator so the sys shutdown is our enable pin and that's coming to the turn on this regulator so it is get powered it got its power and it is being now told to turn on okay and that's coming from right so that's the first step so the second step is the sys shutdown all right so that's the second step now there is a, another signal that is coming which is coming from the cpu which is the sensing signals now after the vr on signal generated then the two mosfets we have two upper lower mosfets right these represents all right let me just copy a mosfet here all right here is a mosfet i'm going to use this mosfet i'll just take a snapshot of this mosfet and use it all right okay all right so let's paste it in our diagram here all right so this mosfet is for the upper mosfet all right so when you get shut down I'll, and uh, I'll copy this one for the first phase okay all right uh, the next thing we need to check is the SVID all right the SVID consists of clock and data all right uh, for space I'll just use that one so the SVID is uh, a, a bidirectional communication between the CPU regulator and the CPU, right? So let's go back to the schematic. So the next signal this is SVID, which is SVID VR underscore SVID data, VID underscore SVID clock, and these two signals are coming from the CPU, right? so the cpu releases these signals right after getting the proper power good signal which is a power good signal from the pch right see right and it's coming from svid alert this is the cpu power supply section see all right so this is a cpu svid data it is being renamed after coming through this short put resistor here all right and this one is coming directly from the CPU SVID section as you can see right so the CPU must release this um, regulator in order see the signal in order to generate the CPU core supply so this is the SVID section in module inside of the CPU if the CPU only way the only way the CPU release this set of SVID assemble signal is when the proc power good signal is high at 1.05 volt this is a power good signal proc power good right so if the proc power good signal is not coming let me find it let, all right proper good uh this is it's coming from the miscellaneous section all right ddr3 this is a power management all right uh all right proper good uh, is a very important signal you should check that signal if it's been released from the pch if that signal is being released from the pch right then you won't have this signal be released right uh this is smd ram power okay on core see on core power good see here it is host power good right is known as a, right the proc power good is a pin from the pch right inside of the pin definition of the pch it's coming from the pch right and it is being renamed to host power good and then coming to the cpu become on core power good this on core power good signal indicates that the non core supply of the cpu is on um, is ready right then on the non core which is not the core vcc core the on core power supply of the cpu is okay and stable 
then the PCH would release this host power good signal and it's going to the, this section on the CPU so this is coming from the PCH from the prop power good pin alright so let's go to the alright so let's go over to the sexy host power good alright and this is our proc power good section see proc power good so this is our proc power good pin from the CPU from the PCH after it's been released it becomes host power good so don't get confused this is a pin definition this is a proc power good only for the PCH in the miscellaneous section see CPU miscellaneous and it is being communicated with the CPU in my class of um, explaining every single pin definition of the PCH that you understand more when I explain that um, every single pin that's found inside of the C the PCH and you'll get a full understanding of the prop power good and all these pin out definitions all right so this whole power good as I said before is going to the on core power good pin of the CPU right after the signal is released from the CPU then the CPU will release the SVID command and the SVID command signals is going directly to your CPU power supply which is coming from here see SVID right so CPU SVID clock CPU SVID data and you should pay and these signals should be should pay attention to these signals this signal should only be checked with an oscilloscope that's a different class by itself where I'm going to show you the secrets and tricks about SVID and how to check the SVID properly with an oscilloscope. You should not use a multimeter. Don't listen to any other repair guys that you should check these signals with a multimeter. You cannot check this signal with a multimeter. You should use an oscilloscope. Okay, when checking the CPU core supply. So that's the third step. So the first step you check supply. Second, you check the shutdown signal. Then the third step you will use our oscilloscope and check the clock and data. Right? Then go back to the CPU page. Right? So you should check with our oscilloscope uh, these two signals. This is the warning signal, the alert signal, and I will explain that right in the future. The next thing, after getting the clock and the data, then what will happen? Can anybody tell me what will happen? We have boot, we have upper gate. We have phase, right? Lower gate, right? Now, as you can see, let's trace. So we have upper gate. So the upper gate, see, upper gate, upper MOSFET will drive. So this, as you can see, is connected to pin number two fours pin, as you can see, the two gates. So upper gate one, right? Upper gate one is being conducted and coming to these two gates to conduct these two MOSFET. Remember, this is a two MOSFET. So we have PQ34 and PQ29, which is a two upper MOSFETs so I'm going to copy this signal copy this MOSFET again right which represent two upper and two lower MOSFETs right and this is U gate one right this is U gate one upper gate one will drive U gate see U gate let's copy this signal right right it's coming here to u gate gt right as you can see it's pq46 so this is the first phase see this is the first phase this is the front end of the coil and this is the back end right on the pwm circuit this is a pwm circuit right so it is going to turn on the main vcc core gvfx core right you gate right but that's not the one that we want we want the other voltage that's been generated so we have remember this is a three phase so this is for one phase this is one phase see this is one phase all right this is another phase here right and here is another phase so it's three phases as you can see right so we're going to use this one right u gate all right let's copy this signal so it's u gate one copy back the signal you get one as you can see it's coming here to turn on the cpu core vcc core and the output see vcc core all right so we're going to copy this signal you get one and select all right so this is you get one this is the fourth step all right so let's uh let me zoom in all right as i said before this can be a very complex circuit so you need to know how to understand the working conditions of the cpu power delivery 
right this is u gate one as you can see let me get this line a bit brighter so you can see all right so that's u gate one there let's go a bit small a bit about two all right all right so that's u gate one and we have l gate one so let's copy this signal all right and paste it and that's going to here to control the lower mosfets i'm just doing one phase you'll get the idea so i don't have to sketch out the entire phase all right so that is one phase now the phase the main phase this is the phase angle c phase one which is here where the voltage will actually release from the cpu regulator right so as you can see see phase one upper gate one lower gate one phase one right and the corresponding voltage will be released and come in to produce vcc core remember this is a dynamic adjustment voltage because the volt the cpu will be inside a, in a different state right so this is our fourth step so we're going to uh so phase let's copy this signal all right i'm designing this diagram based off the schematic so i'll be using the exact pin node definitions right and this is our phase one and this is um connected to the output all right and uh this is our coil and we'll use this coil all right and we'll put it here and i'll uh rename it we'll rotate it and then uh, I'll rotate it one hundred oh sorry <laughs> okay here uh, this is our coil all right and uh it is connected to the CPU power and it is providing the VCC core supply so this is VCC core and this is a fourth step VCC core All right. All right this is VCC core Alright, so uh, after the CPU supply is okay so far, right, this voltage is now generated, right, as you can see, and the CPU now is getting its first core supply, right, there are another, there are two signals that is being released, that, right, that is going back to this um, CPU regulator, and it's VCC sense and VSS sense. The VCC sense is a sense in our detection voltage, it must detect that the CPU gets the correct voltage, and it is coming from vcc sense so let's look for vcc sense and vss sense see vcc v, this is for the graphic supply we want for the cpu so let's look for vcc sense and vss sense and see these sensing these are detection current and voltage compensation resistance and compensation of the total amount of power so this is the total amount of current see i sum right positive and negative the in front the front and the back end of the coil i sense one i sense two it's three phases so we must detect the total amount of current for all three phases all right so let's uh see vcc sense vss sense so this this is coming from the cpu the cpu will release these signals to the cpu power supply as a voltage detection right so let's copy this signal and paste it all right very important and uh the cpu has these pins in it also so let's copy it so that's vcc sense and let's go for vss sense now all right paste and this is vss sense and these are connected directly to the cpu to the cpu regulator right and these are uh all right let's rotate this all 
right so let's put it this way so that's VCC sense all right so this is a diagram that I've been designing I'm designing a circuit diagram here a block diagram of the CPU power supply with steps all right oh let me label this part for you all right so this is the fourth step you should check here all right this is the fourth step and uh, the fifth step is which is supposed to be our VCC sense and VSS sense right very important pins you should check these pins and you should check them at the voltage regulator since it's inside of the socket all right so VCC sense VSS sense is here sorry all right so let's draw an arrow here okay PCC sense all right is going here all right and that's for VCC sense and VSS sense all right let me draw this one a little bit better let me rotate these two signals so it can be easily seen okay so VSS sense VCC it's coming here and this one is VSS sense this one straight line good right. and then uh, all right so that's for VSS sense and VCC sense signals and uh, these signals are being reported back to the CPU regulator as a detection these are sensing our detection signals voltages right okay let me zoom out all right so this is the fifth step all right so that's the fifth step so this is how you're going to check the cpu power supply step by step and i'm going to sketch out the entire process right and how to check the cpu regulator this is a demo video so if you want feel for full videos then you have to pay all right this is the cpu power supply circuit and i i hope you will understand and enjoy you have learned something and um, what i've been teaching you so far on the cpu power supply delivery i'll give a bonus video now on the for one of my practicals on using the oscilloscope and checking the pwm circuit upper mosfet and lower mosfet gate waveform okay thanks for watching all right, so I'm going to plug in the adapter now. As you can see, the lower MOSFET gate has a more switching frequency, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to do both up and lower MOSFET together now, then we're going to compare the two waveforms. And the lower MOSFET gate has a higher switching frequency. Look at this waveform. You see? The lower MOSFET gate has a higher switching frequency than of the... We're going to compare them so we can look at them and see. This is a normal lower MOSFET gate.